Hello, I'm Rex Bastfield, and this is a video and introduction about my Qualcomm Sim BP, which it may not surprise you is a simulator of backpipe sounds. My Sim series of synthesizers uh, don't use samples, they just use synthesis methods. That means that whilst they may not sound quite so authentic, you can have a lot of control over the parameters that shape the timbre and the behaviour of the instrument. What surprised and fascinated me when I first started looking into backpipes is the huge range of instruments throughout the world, all uh, with a common theme, but all sounding quite you know, fairly different and uh, using different techniques to produce the music. So that's why I included the slideshow to uh, start off the video so you could see images of uh, at least some of these uh, remarkable instruments. So I hope you realise that it's not just the Great Highland bagpipes, the Scottish bagpipes that I'm trying to simulate here, but a, a, a much wider range of capped reed instruments. So I'll give a, a quick overview tour of the instrument. We have the preset manager at the top and I provided some good starting points with a variation of three different type, common types of uh, backpipe with a few other reed instruments too. So the two sound generating elements are the chanter, which is the uh, pipe that the piper plays to create the melody and the drones which uh, sound continuously through the performance against which the melody is played. Now on the Sim BP, just like any backpipe, you need air pressure to, uh, to make any noise whatsoever. There's two ways of turning the air pressure on. You can just click on this icon, or you can choose a key switch to uh, turn the sound off. And if you choose, I've got B flat one selected here, um, you can change the octave number in the system to suit. So if you hit B flat one quite hard, you'll get a fast striking. I'll show you that. And if you hit it softly, you'll get a much slower striking of the drones. Uh, down here we have uh, a general panel which is uh, much reduced over the general panel what I normally supply. It's been tailored to the simulation of backpipes obviously and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail soon. Now since we're uh, trying to simulate an acoustic instrument um, I decided just to include environmental effects so we've got two delays we can set those for chorus echo we can even produce flanging should we wish to um, the excellent m verb 7b by martin vikinek which produces a, a, a lovely reverb and this distance knob here is actually um, the Quilcom Foreigner inside, so it uses the same engine, and that's to make the sound appear as though it's coming from a variable amount of distance. I'll show you that in a bit. Finally, down here alongside the volume control, we have something I always include these days, which is a recorder, so you can record up to 10 seconds of uh, a sound clip, music, or just a single sound if you for instance, wants to use it in, in a sampler. So now I'll talk a bit more about the chanter, and there's a lot more info in the, uh, in the user guide, which is well worth reading if you want to dig a little bit deeper. So I'll turn the uh, air on. I'll turn the drones off. And then when I touch a note... So here we have various reeds we can select from. We have double reed or single reed, conical or straight tube. We can change the coupling. The bore of the tube. We can set fluctuation. The air sound which is coloured. We can mix here with the reed. Or we can 
take the sound from the end of the tube, sorry, from the middle of the tube, or from the end of the tube. On a uh, real bagpipe chanter, the uh, the sound of each note can be different from the others. There can be some variation, um, and it's not a harmonic uh, related resonance. It's an harmonic. So we have a comb filter here. So I'll uh, you can you don't have to use this. I've turned it on. So I'll set a note going. Turn the air on. We have the bass frequency of the comb filter, the resonance, and the mix between the filter and the dry input. This section at the bottom on the great Holland bagpipes uh, concerns itself with uh, tuning. We've got two other options. We can use just intonation, which is chromatic over a wide range, or equal temperament if you wanted to sound right with other instruments. Uh, I go into a lot more detail in the uh, the user guide about all of this, and I think it might be a bit boring if I talk about it now, but this is tuned to a real chanter that was made in 1902 by John McNeil. So uh, here you can create all sorts of tunings and detunings according to how nice or how horrible you want the sound to be. Now, grace notes are a, an important part of uh, bagpipe music uh, because many pipes, certainly not all, are open-ended so when you turn on the air and start playing I'll just do that with the drones now okay so you heard some grace notes there, and that was being generated by the auto grace note system. If I turn that off, then I have to play grace notes myself. Which is not so easy for somebody like me who doesn't play very well at all. So... Um, what we have here, if we turn auto grace notes on, is at above a certain velocity, this is set to about a third way, it will produce a short grace note, you set the length there, and in this case it's top G, E or D, which is the grace notes, and top G, so I read, is the most common one. So I'll just play now um, and show you the auto grace note system. I'm playing softly now. I'm going to play hard. Soft. Hard. So that that's, makes life a lot easier to get a more authentic sound. Um, now if you turn on random, uh, then the three notes in here are cycled through slowly and the length of the grace note uh, varies at a different rate to the actual um, grace note that you set here. So I'll just demonstrate that if I can. Turn the air on, don't forget. I'm playing the same note but getting different behaviour. So I quite like that feature because it uh, it makes it easy to sound uh, convincing, I think. Right, we have the option to choose uh, open-end or closed-end. An open-end means that there will always be 
uh, a sound playing once the air is turned on and you press the first note and then it's the tonic that sounds and the Great Island bagpipes are tuned into a uh, so-called Mixolydian scale based on A, but it's very approximate. They take some liberties with their tuning. Uh, but once I start it, I'll turn the air on. Play a note. That's B, C. And I take my finger off and it drop, drops back to the A. Now, if I change to closed end, that means when there are no fingers lifted or keys pressed, depending on the type of pipe, you don't hear anything, so you can play that in a more conventional staccato fashion. You don't have to. You can hold the A down. You have the option then. So it depends what type of pipe you're trying to um, simulate, whether you have an open end or a closed end. Now I should mention the auto grace note feature is only available with the Great Harling backpipes, the GHBs, if you choose just intonation, which is the most common or variations of that, um, then you have, to, you have to create your own grace notes because these are largely or fully chromatic uh, pipes uh, that use the just intonation and similarly with equal temperament. Now, as I think I mentioned before, you can make your own scales uh, and you can use microtuning to set any of the notes uh, to whatever frequency ratio you want. There's even a ratio calculator so you can dial in the ratio you want and set that value there. Uh, so for this uh, Pungi simulator, Pungi, I don't know, simulator, uh, I've created uh, what is called an Hannibal Toady scale. <laughs> okay, so let's, I'll just demonstrate that. I'm just going to play the white notes. <laughs> That's the uh, the snake charmer's pipe. Uh, it's not really a bagpipe, but they blow into this uh, air reservoir and then use circular breathing to maintain the pressure. So now it's time to talk about the drones. Uh, the drones use a similar uh, sound generating system to the chanter, with a couple of exceptions. One, there is no coloration control because the drones play at a fixed pitch so there would be no point in really in varying the sound between individual notes although the uh, the waveguide system will produce some differences in sound according to the pitch that you set the other difference is this drift control here the drift control so if we set the fine tuning to zero and turn the drones on the drift control brings in a phase drift, which is different for each of the three drones. Of course, we can also detune the drones. And we can introduce drift to that. So that gives a quite different range of... Um, drone sounds just from these three settings. So what pitch should you set for each drone? Well, there's uh, a sort of standard uh, approach for different instruments, like the great Highland backpipes have two drones, uh, one octave below the tonic and one drone an octave below that. But a lot of other pipes use octaves and fifths so uh, some of the presets that are provided, well, will uh, select the correct pitch for that type of uh, instrument for the drones. Now then, this is a synthesizer. 
lot of sample players so you can set your drones up into whatever sort of uh, uh, chord you want so for instance I've called this one minor drone I think I did one with a funky drone which is set to a diminished seventh. Let's have a look at that or listen to that. Bit of fun there, you can set whatever you want. A good piper or a piper who uh, chooses to play in a marching band or with other pipers will try to strike in the drones that is to stop them sounding uh, very very quickly by hitting the bag or striking the bag um, that's uh, quite it's more familiar to us to hear the uh, the striking come up a little bit slowly so that's what you've been hearing so far so we have settings for each individual drone here this is the start pitch the time it takes to reach to the target pitch and the time for the cut that's when you uh, you stop playing now a lot of pipes will have pretty much no cut so let's just turn that down and similarly if we turn down the strike in time so you have quite a choice of uh, of the striking and cut behaviors there now one thing i should say is if you set these values all differently then the point at which they start to speak they will be out of tune and they will ramp up and come into tune um so you've got a lot of variety there as to the type of striking and cut sound that you you have finally you have this mix and arrangement where you can pan each drone left right and uh, mix the levels together and then the overall mix level for the whole of the drones is set with this with this knob here so you don't have to keep tweaking all the level controls just to uh, to match the chanter sound now as i mentioned before the general panel here is uh, adapted to uh, to the, what it's trying to simulate so you can set a pitch bend range here and you can also bend in chromatic intervals so if i just start that up and i'll select chromatic and i'm just operating the pitch wheel then So that gives you another way of introducing grazed notes above and below the pitch that you're playing at. The tuning uh, is for the whole instrument, including the drones. So you can, uh, if you're using, say, just intonation, which is uh, the ratios are based on C on this instrument, but you can play in any uh, in any key you want simply by uh, transposing it here. This A equals 440 hertz is uh, useful for if you've got uh, frequency values. Now, I've seen a few frequency tables. Um, sometimes they're based on a non-standard A equals 440, so it would be probably as much as 459 hertz. So if you set that to, well, let's go up a semitone. We can set that to... 459 hertz i hope no i went up one yeah yeah 459 so if you've got 459 hertz you'll see these values here have changed so you can enter the notes directly off the table if you watch these values here you'll see them all change so it saves you having to do ratio conversions and all that sort of rubbish so uh, that's what that's for we have uh, an LFO with a special 
waveform, which is more or less, but not exactly, on-off, which is based on the fingering technique of opening a hole lower than the uh, the target pitch. Um, so a player will flutter the finger up and down. So this gives you um, that sort of sound. Now you use the mod wheel, uh, but it's either on or off. So above about a third of the way, it's uh, it comes into action. And you can set the amount. Far too much. Nice and subtle, does it? And if you turn glide on here, you can set a, a rate uh, of glide between successive notes. And if you turn velocity to time on, then the harder you hit the note, the faster the glide will be. So you've got some real-time control. Let's increase it further so you can hear it better. So slow key press and a fast key press. And I provided uh, something that uh, one of my friends said it would be useful. He has an electronic wind instrument which outputs the uh, portamento time on CC uh, number five. Uh, but you can set whatever CC you want there. So you can set one for your mod wheel or four for your foot battle or whatever it is. And you can set the amount of range there. The best pipers will try to maintain and succeed in maintaining a constant pressure into the pipes from the bag and uh, periodically they blow the bag up or squeeze the bellows depending on the type of pipe but this isn't always achieved and a sound you might hear sometime sometimes is when the uh, the pressure drops and the pipe has to put more air into the bag uh, and then you'll hear a slight drop in pitch and somebody actually timed this and uh, the uh, average inflation period is about four seconds so this is a special LFO which drops the pitch um, slightly every four seconds according to the amount of uh, pitch drop that you want so I'll demonstrate that <laughs> So let's turn it up. So it's another little feature which uh, can make the thing sound a little bit more authentic, I hope. Now, the only uh, effect I want to demonstrate is this... Uh, distance and this is uh, much better heard and appreciated on headphones so uh, if you haven't got any headphones on pause the video and put them on and then have a listen here we go and we can adjust that apparent distance like that actually <laughs> so there you go that's the uh, the sim BP I may have gone into a little bit more detail than was interesting but there's even more detail in the user guide and also in the background info folder you'll find all sorts of links and documents uh, about the subject um, so I'm gonna play out with uh, my simulation of a uh, inland pipes playing a piece called Saddle the Pony with a few old pictures of uh, old inland pipe players from Ireland. So uh, I hope you enjoy this, have a bit of fun with it, and um, 
Until the next time, bye.